Sony gamers everywhere. Yes, you are not. Your, your hearing's not affected. This is Clinton Navigator Bowman, managing editor of Games and Tech and host of the experience. And you are listening to Sony Centric episode number 56. I'm joined by my co host for the experience, Keith Shadowhacks and Mitchell, the editor in chief of the Out of Haven Productions. What's going on, Keith? Hi, peoples. What's up? And I'm also being joined by senior staff writer and all around Sony Australia fanboy. Nah, he's not even a fanboy. He's just Carl May Smart. What's up, Carl? What up? I was going to say, wait, we have fanboys? <laughs> that being said, so no, listen no, no. up. That's on the Nintendo podcast. Oh. oh, that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I want to quickly address the status of Sony centric after this episode. Um, I wanted to end it on a nice even number. Um, a nice even round number would be fifty-five because you know you could divide that. That's like five times eleven. But you know, I want to end it on the math, Mister Professor. Sorry, uh, I wanted to end it on a nice even number. Um, episode fifty-six seems like a good place to put it on hiatus for now. We are working on. You know, we are working on rebranding and not rebranding, but, you know, revamping. Re- revamping the format of the show. So within the next two or three months, Sony Centric will be back with episode 57. But for now, we just wanted to end it because there's a couple games coming out in the near future. And there's a big story that came out today um, out of Sony that we really feel the need to talk about. But let's just jump in their first Activision is teasing an announcement for tomorrow. Um, it seems like they will be revealing the the uh, date that the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy will be coming out. Now, I'm kind of excited for this. Um, Keith, I know... I Actually, all three of us, me, myself, Carl, and Keith, we played Crash Bandicoot back in the day, haven't I've we? I've never heard of that game in my life. Sorry. Damn. No, I'm just kidding. Like, where I'm about to say, it sucks to be you. <laughs> no, I, I, no, I, I played a ton of Crash Bandicoot back in the day. I, yeah. I'm, honestly, if you really want to know how I feel, I think it is really retarded and how Sony doesn't have this license anymore. Not even Sony's how Naughty Dog doesn't have it. Yeah. 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 Well, Naughty Dog and Sony are pretty much bad fellows. So, uh, yeah. It's kind of ridiculous how this license was handled and how it, you know, it, it went to so many different people. I mean, Night Dog, I think it went to Traveler's Tales. Um, and then it went with Vivendi. It, it was, it's been everywhere. Radical Entertainment, it's been everywhere. So, I mean, I feel like re- Activision just picked up the license again. I mean, we did get Crash Bandicoot, well, a revamped Crash Bandicoot in Skylanders. And, and this was the character that, for one point in time, was Sony's mascot. Oh yeah. So like it's like, hey, your mascot got whored out. How do you feel about this, Sony? Especially after they tried to, to make Jersey Devil the fucking mascot. And Spyro, who doesn't belong to Sony either? Yeah, but Carl, um, let's have a conversation. I mean, how do you feel about this? Uh, the announced date. What do you think the announced date will be for Insane Trilogy? Uh, to be honest, I have no, I reckon it's probably somewhat soonish if they're doing it with this type of hype. Like, it's very weird because now we're getting hype for an announcement of a date of when the game will come out eventually. What yeah. be the first time? You know, Square Enix? Yeah. Day yeah, two true. for an announcement of an announcement. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> but everybody got hyped as hell, though. So it worked. Got everybody, got everybody kind of crazy. Uh, See, the, the best thing in this situation for the, the guys that are putting it out is to just to screw with everybody's heads because that's sort of been the whole joke of this since uh, they made the announcement back at E3 last year, I think it was. Yes, E3. Um, if they turn around and go, oh, here's our announcement for the release date, and it's today. That would be awesome, actually. Just, just, just to watch everybody's minds go. Word, I'll be sitting on here like, where's my card? Where's my, where's my bank card? Like, yeah, that would be good. All right, so Amazon started a game studio a couple, like, I want to say four years ago? Has it been four years now? Oh, yeah. It's been, I think it's been about four years, 2013, because after um, Killer Instinct Season 1 was done, that's when they announced that Amazon Games had picked up Double Helix. Man, how time has flown. Yeah. So, so they unveiled at TwitchCon last September three games 
for the PC that they released, Breakaway, which is a foreign for mythical logical sport brawler built for live streaming. New World is another one, as well as Crucible. Um, Crucible being a third person shooter that's multiplayer and streaming focused. So, and um, New World is a MMO sandbox game. So it looks like they're itching, you know, basically bringing in Twitch, as you know, they obviously bought Twitch sometime last year. So, in another bit of news posted on posted on Destructoid, former CEO of Sony Online Entertainment, John Smedley, has been recruited to open and lead a new branch of Amazon Game Studios in San Diego. John Smedley, for those that don't know, was part of the team that created the original EverQuest. And also, when Sony Entertainment Online Entertainment was bought from Sony in 2015, he led the newly named Daybreak Game Company as his president, stepping down shortly from the position afterwards, and founded Pixel Image Games. And then they shut down while the debut title was in early access. So with the history um, of John Smedley not being able to really, outside of EverQuest, really hold anything down, what are you thinking, Keith, about the potential of this new studio that Amazon Game Studio wants to bring up? You're asking me how I feel or what I think. What do you think? I mean, sorry Nothing. for saying that. You don't Nothing. really think anything? No, because they picked up Double Helix. I really haven't seen anything from the um, accusation. Um, acquisition, yeah. Acquisition. And um, I, I haven't seen anything really solid. I mean, it's it's like Amazon is throwing ideas out there and trying to see which one sticks. And I applaud them for, their, for them doing that. But at the same time, the reception for most of these games hasn't been very positive. They tried to. They tried to use Twitch a lot. And they had an event not long ago where they talked about these games and had people play those games. And looking at Reddit, at talking to people that played them, they were like, yeah, it's all right. It's all right. You know, Double Helix, this was the team that brought Killer Instinct back to the forefront with the help with, with uh, Rare and Microsoft. And then when Amazon picked them up, you didn't hear anything from them. And it doesn't really seem like you are hearing anything from them. Because last I checked, the people that are working on these new games right now hasn't been Double Helix. I'm actually looking for, I'm actually kind of like, um, intrigued by Double Helix, really. But at the same time, like this. Doing? Yeah, about what they're doing. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, they, they still do. have their website. Well, that's the thing. What are they doing? I mean, I'll take a look. I mean, not really. I think what UFO, they did a game, um, UFOs Love Cows, I guess. And this was yeah. back in 2014. It, it seems like a bad deal for you to spend as much money as you did to pick up a company to have them just sit there. And they only did like one game. Well, keep in mind, people said the same thing about Microsoft and, and Rare. No, we know why Microsoft picked up Rare. Um, for the yeah. IPs, right? Yeah, there are two different. There's two different examples there. Rare had many, many IPs that people would pay for, and they knew this is why they picked them up. They, and they used almost all of them. And they might get Battletoads again. You know, you never know. But that's that's Microsoft. Let's talk. Let's talk. I mean, them picking up the guy who did EverQuest. I mean, it, it looks like they're gonna do an MMO. I mean. Do you think they'll go the route of an MMO? Do you think they go the route somewhere else? Who knows? I Indeed. Mean, the last I, 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 wasn't he also helming uh, EverQuest Next or just Next as they were calling it, which got canceled finally after all these years. I think so. So I don't know if he would want to do another MMO. But then again, you can never tell. It's it's up to the description of Amazon to say we want to do this. Right. Now, if they take his all the, all the years that he's been in the game industry and take what he has to say and his insight and his leadership, then maybe, you know, it'll work out better. But if anything, hopefully he'll say no more MMOs because the market is saturated. There is no need for any more MMOs, especially if you're talking about breaking into the MMO scene overseas. The MMOs are a dime a dozen over there. Yeah, over here, it's just like, you know, like there's still no room. It's still kind of like packed uh, well, door no. to door. No, because MMOs that come out over there come over here. They're just not as big. But right. I wouldn't even say not as big because people tend to think that Warcraft is like the biggest name MMOs over here, which it really isn't anymore. Yeah. Uh, Mace, MMOs out. Mace, your thoughts on Schmedley joining Amazon? Well, to be honest, like this is the first time I've heard even Amazon having a game company. Which, <laughs> See? which to me to me which to me just makes me go, oh crap, here we go. It means that they're gonna produce games that I'm not gonna be allowed to buy. Because you know, Amazon hates Australia. They have a game engine um, too. Oh wow, and a game engine. Wow. Um 
I, I really have no idea what they're going to plan. Uh, let's face it, the entire gaming space is flooded. Uh, just about every genre has about a billion and one games going to it. But until they actually produce something of context, or at least some sort of content, uh, I can't really say anything one way or the other. You know, Yeah, you can acquire all the guys you like with the history behind Sony and this and that, but at the end of the day, you can still produce some crap. Just let's, and Keith, cover your ears. Uh, let's not forget Mighty Number no. Nine. Oh my God, I'm triggered. God damn it! Why'd you say that company? Why'd you say that game? Where's my damn money? Where's my rewards? I'll get Infune. <laughs> yeah, that being said, that being said, let's move on to the last thing that we're gonna be talking about, and we're gonna talk about this in quite amount of context, ladies talk and gentlemen. About triggered. Let's, let, let's trigger a few people. So Sony, on its official blog, recently announced that PlayStation Now will be discontinued, effective August 15, 2007, on the following platforms. Hey, 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 wait, 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 wait. Let's do it, do it, do it another way. It has, a, it has a better effect. It's more dramatic. All right, go ahead. Can you take it? It's being discontinued on anything other than the PC and PlayStation 4. You know, I said that before the podcast, and I was like, yeah. That's the better way of saying it. Is that way you mean I can't play it on PlayStation Three? Nope. No. My PS Vita? Nope. Nope. Your PS TV? Nope. Why would you want to? But no. My Samsung Smart TV? Nope. My Sony Bravia? Hell no. Damn. Bravia, son. by the way. You're fucked. Sorry. So yeah, pretty Sony, much. Sony, so Sony pretty much PlayStation great. Three, PlayStation Three, PS Vita, PlayStation TV, basically marking the death of the PlayStation Vita and the PlayStation TV anyway. Uh, any. Sony Bravia television from 2013 to 2016, with 2016 models of Sony Bravias being discontinued on April 1st, 2017. Sounds like a bad April Fool's joke, doesn't it? All Sony Blu-ray player models, as well as all Samsung TV models that all feature PlayStation Now. Now, according to Senior Marketing Manager for PlayStation Now, Brian Dunn, he stated that after thoughtful consideration, they decided to shift the focus and resources to PlayStation 4 and Windows PC to further develop and improve the user experience on those two devices. Wait, this stop. Moves... Wait, stop. I have to do this. I have to do this. All right. <clears throat> so for all you Sony fanboys that didn't think Sony had any kind of focus on the PC, hey, guess what, guys? Apparently they do. Guess to... who was wrong? Eat them apples. Okay. So. So, this moves puts us in the best position to grow the service even further. If you use any of the above devices, we want to give you our heartfelt thanks for your support and hope you'll continue with us. Remember that all of your PS Now cloud game saves can be easily accessed on PS4 and Windows PC. Here's the problem with that. What if you don't have a PlayStation 4 and what if you don't have a PC that can actually play these games? Well, properly? to be fair, which is kind of hard in the situation, the requirements for PlayStation Now and PC aren't that high. At the same time, not everybody's gonna have a PC that even meets that, especially, oh, especially if you know all you really get your PC for is basic work. If you have like an AMD E4 processor, like, what are you playing PlayStation now on there for? You know, if you're running with like an Intel Pentium N32, whatever, like, you can maybe run it. But this kind of gimps a lot of people, especially those who bought a PlayStation TV or who bought a Bravia or Blu-ray player or Samsung TV just for PlayStation now. I'm willing to bet that the bean counters over at Sony did not speculate on this very much because they're going to lose money on this. They really are. And I think they might hit with a class action lawsuit. I mean... Oh, they're going to get sued. Uh, Mace, your thoughts on Sony just removing and removing support for PlayStation now on anything other than a PlayStation 4 or Windows PC? Uh, I don't see an issue with it. They want to focus on their current generation console. You know, the t the TVs and the Blu-ray players, you're not buying those just for this one piece of content. Mm. You know, you, you, you're buying a TV because you want to watch TV. You're buying a Blu-ray player because you want to watch Blu-rays. It just so happens that as an added bonus, you got access to, you could, you could get access to the PlayStation Now feature. Right. You know, the ones that I'd be more pissed off about is the removal of it on PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita. Not so much the Vita, because let's face it, the damn thing's dead in a brick anyway. <laughs> um, and that's coming from a Vita owner. Uh, 
but the PlayStation 3, a lot of people still own PlayStation 3s and a lot of people will still be using it with the PlayStation Now service. They're the ones that have the most right to be pissed off because they're losing access to something yet again, you know, as uh, Clinton, you brought up before we started recording. Let's not forget the other iOS fiasco. Uh, they're now losing yet another service. Again, proving the biggest fidelity with digital games, by the way, because, you know, what about all those people that have paid for this service for so long? They don't get to keep this. It's just bye-bye games. But Some people the think day, digital it, is the future. It's not. It's the, the <laughs> most restrictive. It, it is a restrictive future, if anything, but that's a topic for another day. Uh, but yeah, the, the PlayStation 3 owners have the most right to be pissed off about this. But I don't blame Sony with going to focus on the PlayStation 4 and... I guess the PC, because they're the two most viable platforms for the company right now. Oh yeah, I mean it's it was an inevitability, but at the same time, I mean, removing all of a, removing support for PlayStation Three, I mean that's that that's a bad idea. Like to be fair, I know people that go to buy TVs for the smart feature, right? Yeah. So you know people. I knew people that said, oh, word, PlayStation. Now I can stream my PlayStation 3 games on my TV, and it comes with a PlayStation 3 DualShock. Oh, man, I'm totally going to get this TV. That was one of the selling points for that and the Sony TVs. If you go to most major electronic stores, especially in the U.S., they have them set up on the kiosk still for the PlayStation uh, now on Sony and Samsung TVs. That is a major selling point for both TV brands. Oh, yeah. Like, I've seen it just recently at a Best Buy, but... I, I think in a micro center too, but you know, I understand where Mace is coming from where like, dude, you're buying a TV to watch TV. <laughs> like, I get it. But you know, in, in a country like America where, you know, the selling point isn't the origin of it or the selling point isn't always, you know, oh yeah, you get to put your cable box or whatever case you The selling point is like, oh, we have Roku support or we have like WebOS, if it's LG, or, you know, we have we have Google Android television, which is kind of like the new selling point for smart TVs going forward. You know, let's just say Samsung just says, fuck it, we're going to just drop support and we're not going to update the Android TV operating system anymore. You can get justifiably upset about that. But at the same time, but at the same time, I understand it. I mean, this is kind of like, like, but I do agree with you, Carl, about the PlayStation 3 being one of the most egregious removals. But they didn't really say anything. Uh, Keith, uh, I know this is something you brought up. They didn't really say anything about a refund. They only said that um, if you pay three months in advance or if you, you had that subscription, that you may, may, I'm doing air quotes here, get charged for the service after the discontinuance, they'll stop it. They didn't say anything about uh, refunds. So, no, they did not. Because I think they're expecting, I mean, I, I, I want to see if you two agree with this line of thinking. They're expecting the people to switch over to the PlayStation 4 or to a PC. More than likely. Carl, do you agree with that? Oh, totally agree with that. Unless you hate and, PC gaming. Well, who hates PC gaming? Honestly. I can name a couple of people right now, but I won't. <laughs> right, Twitter? <laughs> I'm going hard after a certain person. For a <laughs> had this had this been announced at the same way that other OS was removed, like just randomly discontinued today, how do you think people would honestly feel about that? The same way. Nobody likes having something taken away from them. Okay. It's positive. It's, it doesn't make a difference if you would have did it on the sly or if you would have made this grand announcement like they did. It doesn't make a difference. You're just taking away something that I use. But speaking of... Well, I know... the, 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 let me ask you a question, Keith. How often do you use it? Actually, a lot, actually. Wow. <laughs> that was, that, that was <laughs> unexpected. Shut me up. <laughs> that was I unexpected. Use that, I, use that, I use that in my front room because I have two uh, Samsung Smart TVs. And um, I only play role-playing games or action games. That's it. I don't play fighting games. Or I don't play racing games. And for the most part, who the hell is going to play fighting games? Who the hell is going to play exactly. fighting games on the streaming? Like, I'm well, sorry. Exactly. What? But Should for we... but for regular games, like perfect example, games like Crash Bandicoot or role-playing games, it works out just fine. Like honestly, I stream from my Xbox to think I, there's a slight delay, 
and this is me playing Killer Instinct, but I don't drop combos. Like, but, but that's keep just in mind, the reason why I do this because I actually signed up for the PlayStation not a while ago. Just, I remember that. Just, just do some testing on it, and then I didn't cancel my subscription. And then I just said, you know what? I already paid for it. Let's play it, and I've been using it. Yeah, because I was actually thinking about getting PlayStation now anyway. It's a great way to pick up classic games, obviously, well, playing them, not owning them, because you can't own the digital content, with just a dual shock controller in your living room or your bedroom, and that's right. it. It's a cheap alternative instead of going out and buying a PlayStation 3 in the games. You're right. But again, like I said, I was actually thinking about just I was actually thinking about just picking up a seven day trial and just trying it out with some of the older games that I never got a chance to play. I, I recommend you doing it because you can still play on a PC, obviously. But uh, PlayStation Three owners and PlayStation Vita owners and Sony TV and Samsung TV owners are going to be out of luck fairly soon. So if, yeah. you, if you're going to do the same thing, make sure you have another system you can play it on. Otherwise, it's not going to be worth your investment. But to be fair, like a lot of the games that are on PlayStation now right now, I'll I'll I'll. I'll speak in true honesty, they're on backwards compatibility with the Xbox One or anyway. Not all of them. Especially the first party games you can't get. Well besides the first party games, but like, you know, most of the most of the most of the um games that are uh you know on multiple platforms, I'm like, well, I got Catherine. I got Tekken Tag Two. Yeah. Like, before, yeah, but before we got Catherine, it was already on PS now. You know, and there's still a bunch of games that are still on PS now that you can't get on Xbox. So it it, it doesn't really balance itself out. This is true. I mean, don't get me wrong. I never got a chance to play um, Assure's Wrath, so I might take the opportunity to you do know, so. That's there. Just shatters there. Oh, man. It's, it's, it's such a loss for people. I, I don't know. I really don't know why they did that. Again, uh, um, and I'm going to go back to what uh, Carl said. It was more or less to focus on your new co- the, the more viable consoles. That is what you said, right? That's what I said. Just making absolutely sure. But that would mean that the PC is viable to Sony. But it isn't. I don't know what you're talking about. Is it? I mean, they're trying to develop drivers for this for native PlayStation 4 support, PS4 controller support. Mm, maybe I don't know any better. I, I thought, you know, who knows? I wonder if I could play Puzzle Fighter on PlayStation now and it won't lag. Once you try it, find out. Let us know. Oh, yeah, definitely. Or I could do it right now and let you know. I do love me, I do love me some Puzzle Fighter. Let me go to my PlayStation now on my Sony TV. My Sony, my Sands on TV while I can. Uh, there's no listing for it on the games list. Boo. What Puzzle Fighter? Yep, no Puzzle Fighter. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> it says Super it. Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix. It's because you said Super, and he wants to pee for Puzzle. Ah, uh, no, we yeah, we just call it Puzzle Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that being said, that hey, being... Hey, all, all, I, all I can say is, you know, that speaking from a strictly Australian point of view, them taking it off one platform, putting it onto another, doesn't affect me in the slightest because they still haven't brought it out in Australia. This, this is, is true. true. <laughs> <laughs> like... Yes, why are you even asking? And, 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 the, and the thing is, like, well, that's the thing. Like, I want to to play there. Like, I want to be able to do this because, you know, they have some of my favorite games on the list you know uh red dead redemption for example is one of my all-time favorite games xbox i don't i i no longer yeah well that's the thing i don't have an xbox i don't have a playstation 3 anymore so i can't play these games unless i go out and buy it on steam but you know steam is still charging me american prices at an overinflated rate so something like this a streaming system that i pay you know 20 30 bucks a month for It'd be a great thing for me to be able to do. Yeah, it but would, no, would. they don't want to put it out in Australia. So, <laughs> to you guys. <laughs> that being said, any final thoughts before we get the hell up out of here for this uh, final episode of Sony Centric until about E3 time? I am looking forward to playing the copy of Yakuza Zero that I picked up very cheaply yesterday. This game has been getting great reviews, including the one you can find at theouterhaven.net. And yeah, I just want to like answer the phone in the most epic way possible. <laughs> uh, Keith, for, those of... for those of you who don't get that reference, get Yakuza Zero, play the uh, phone dating sim game. Oh lord. <laughs> Yo, Keith, uh, final thoughts? I hope I get better soon. Um, I really hope that Sony 
pays attention to his audience because if they don't, they might find themselves in a different position. Um, I do think that removal of PlayStation Now is probably one of their worst decisions they've made. Maybe they don't think about it right now, but it will bite them in the ass later. And uh, there are a shit ton of games out there for PlayStation 4. You should go check out and play. I you know, it. honestly, I kind of want to just go back and work my way through Tales of Berseria. It is a great game. But uh, there's on multiple consoles. Play a game that's exclusive to PlayStation. Oh, you're talking about a game that's exclusive to PlayStation? Like Horizon Zero Dawn? Not out yet, but yeah. Yeah. Or Neo. Oh, yeah. Nah, we, we I'm, 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 I'm more pi- hyped for uh, Horizon. You're both crazy. Near I, want, I, want, I, want, I want to shoot robotic dinosaur things with a bow and arrow and be badass. I, I'm sorry, that advertisement is so fantastic. Like, yeah, you know you can shoot with a gun, but can you do it with this? <laughs> like, I love that commercial. I really do. So I can be Laura Croft on Mechanical Animals? Exactly. That works. That works. Exactly. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is the final episode until about E3 time. We will be back with an episode of The Experience this week. Um, it should The, the last one should be uploaded by the time this one's uploaded. In addition, in addition, we have a whole bunch of other podcasts on the on on the Outer Haven Productions, the A One podcast, which is anime related, with a with our friends Josh Piedra, Will Coke, and Matt Get Silly as Paul. We also have the Nintendo Entertainment Podcast with Todd Black, William Coke. There's a pattern here, and Tyler Kelball. And yeah, that's about it. That's all. This What's thing, the pattern? I didn't see it. You know, Will, Will's on the anime and Nintendo podcast. I'm just saying, there's a lot of animal. 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 All right. Lots of animal. Animal. Lots, lots of weebiness. Weebos. Anyways. That. Yeah. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming along on the ride for Sony Centric. This has been episode 56. I'm Clinton Navigator Bowman on behalf of Carl Smart and Keith Mitchell. Yo. Yo, keep tapping that X button. Press X to Jason.